We never rented a house in Sedona. Oh my gosh! Why did I make it so tall? It fell. Okay. Uh, no, this can't be. <laughs> this can't be how I do it. Okay, this time it's gonna be good. I can feel it. Come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> no! Do I need another thing to support the first thing? Oh, there we go. I'm a shelf lower than usual, so one might say this is a new low for the channel. <laughs> This is tilted, no. Greetings and salutations, beautiful humans. This is Amity Ravenclaw Elf, the person who should really change her username. I think I wanna stick with this one just cause like people recognize me by this name and this name actually comes up if you start typing it into the YouTube search bar, so I'm pretty proud of that. And yes, obviously this video is a clear setup for future videos in which I might do like how I would adapt this specific book or how I would adapt this specific book or even how I would adapt this musical into a movie because I'm the one person who wants that. I got some pretty good reactions to the how I would rewrite Descendants 3 and how I would write the Tiana series. So um, long story short, I've gone mad with power. Oh, since this is a new shelf, you guys can see the setup I have for the other American Girl dolls. He thought that uh, Kaya was living large up there with her bed. Nah, it's all about Addie, Josefina, and Felicity. <laughs> Actually, now I feel bad for Kaya. Maybe Kaya should hang out with the others. Also, Cecile and Samantha are over there in the bathroom washing their hands. So that's fun. I, I really like showing off my bookshelf to people. I need to kind of get over that. Anyway, I, like many people who exist, did a lot of reading when I was in, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, little less in college, but I still do read some books, like I've been reading the Octavia Butler stuff, and, and of course, Children of Blood and Bone. But there's been a lot of questions about how to adapt books. What are the good book adaptations? Holes, obviously. The Giver, less obviously. Twilight, somehow. What makes a good book adaptation? Should it be a movie or should it be a show? Should it be a cartoon? No, it shouldn't. I don't, I'm, I'm the controversial one who says that most of the time it shouldn't be a cartoon. I realize that I'm in the minority there, so I'll leave that alone. You know what, that can be my controversial opinion. My controversial thing is that I don't think that most books should be adapted into cartoons. Also, I like reboots. I don't actually like how they turn out because they often turn out bad, but I like the idea of reboots. Cat, mommy's talking, girl. I like the idea of reboots. I like the potential they have, and then they often don't realize it, and that's a bummer. I think that every reboot has the potential to be good. So when people are like, oh no, they're making a live action Lilo and Stitch, I don't, I don't have that reaction. My thought is, ooh, this could be good. And then like, sometimes it isn't, but sometimes, I guess Cinderella of 2015 was pretty good. Like I le it had the song Lavender's Blue Dilly Dilly, which I learned, so that's fun. Enough. Dallying though, I realize I already said that in the Descendants 3 video, but maybe this could be a running gag. We're going to explore the criteria for how different things should be adapted. Should they be a film? Should they be a show series, you know? Or should they perhaps be a musical, like the Percy Jackson musical? Do things get adapted as podcasts? Because if not, then like that'd be interesting. Like, oh yeah, we're not gonna do a movie for this. We're gonna do a radio show. <laughs> Posture, must maintain the posture. I'm gonna compose a list of four questions you need to ask before adapting any book, any book at all, any of the books, even this cultural literacy dictionary. And we're gonna use some examples as well, just so that we can kind of illustrate what I'm talking about with this adaptation stuff. No, not that much headspace, silly girl. Okay. Item one, how much time are we willing to spend in the universe and with the characters? Would it absolutely ruin the fun if we were to like take a side character and go, hey, what's this guy doing? What's his arc? Do we wanna explore his arc for an episode? If a writer who is not the author were to write side adventures that were not in the book or books, would that ruin it? Would it be unfun? Would we, the viewer, be interested in seeing that? If it's a yes, if that's something we would enjoy, if the universe is immersive and we want to explore the universe and characters in ways that weren't canon, then we would want it to be a show. A lot of shows that do exist and that are adapted from books ultimately end up just being like movies that are cut into smaller episodes. This could have been a movie and it follows the coherent structure of a movie. You just chopped it up into episodes so that it can be enjoyed as a television show, which is fine, but I'm kind of talking more about like a show format specifically. I'm looking at this from a perspective of, hey, if this were a show, how 
many seasons could we get out of it? Are we limited to what the book does? It seems like this is delineating, oh, is the book good or is the book like really boring? That's not the case. There are some really good books that I just kind of wouldn't want to explore more. When I was young, I read The Selection by Kiera Cass, which I enjoyed tremendously. It was very fun when I was like, a teenager. I read it in a beauty shop and I remember that because I was getting my hair done and they said, what are you reading? And I said, This Election by Kiara Cass. And then I was like, oh, um, I, it sounds like I said this election, but I said the selection. That's a conversation I had multiple times. Fun book. It's a YA book about like a society. It's divided into different castes. It's in a caste system and the king has to find a wife. So he just selects a bunch of girls from like some headshots of them and he has to choose which one is gonna be his wife. And the one who the main character is, is from like a low cast. Ooh, is she gonna be the queen? It's a YA book, so probably. She doesn't even wanna be the queen. This book was really entertaining. I don't necessarily know that I would want to make it a show. And I realize that I'm saying show pretty loosely because like there are shows that don't do like off the plot things that expand with different characters, but I feel like optimally a show would do that. I'm pretty sure the selection is going to be a show on Netflix. I feel like it wouldn't gain much from the show format other than giving you some cliffhangers to make it, <laughs> to make it like more thrilling, I guess. I guess like you can end one episode with her kicking the prince in the pelvic region and then you're like, oh man, she kicked the prince. What's gonna happen now? And then next episode it's like, he's into it and it's like, oh man. He's into it. Then you're not really wringing a lot out of the it being a series thing. I feel like if you want to get the most out of it being a series in a serialized format is that you would be able to go, oh, we're gonna do a bottle episode with this character where he thinks about his past and like we expound on that. Interestingly enough, I feel like Twilight would do really well in the show format, mostly because the actual plot isn't something that's fun. So if we, <laughs> if, if we were to have the overarching plot is the Edward Bella stuff and then like the episode can be, hey, what's Leah up to? What's Emmett up to? What's, do we want to expound on Jasper being a Confederate soldier? Maybe like have a, you know what, actually. <clears throat> Cat, what did you drop? Actually, I feel like I could make a whole video about like how I would adapt and like fix Twilight. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. But seriously, I think that there's a lot of potential there. Harry Potter, you wouldn't adapt because you know, JK Rowling is a turf. But if there was like a guaranteed situation where she wouldn't be getting any royalties from it and like like maybe it's a posthumous thing where it's like, hey, JK Rowling's been dead for 30 years and her next of kin is super pro trans people. So it's okay to make an adaptation of Harry Potter again. If that were a case, then I think Harry Potter would do well in a TV show format because people would be interested in seeing, hey, what are the characters up to in Hogwarts? Let's have another season where they go back to Hogwarts after the seventh year. And also we're gonna like take out all of the weird turfy stuff she put in there, all of the weird like anti-Semitic stuff with the goblins. We're taking all that out. In fact, we're gonna have an arc where we actually explore like the culture of the goblins and the culture of the elves. And like, instead of going, hee hee hee, they love slavery. We can go, I, I need to stop doing this too because this could actually also be a whole nother video. This is a nightmare. So so that's the, that's really the first and biggest question is like, okay, how much time do you want to spend in this universe? Do you want to just stick to the plot itself of the books or would you rather hang out a little bit? Some people probably would. There are some people who are probably like, yeah, I would love to expound on the universe of the selection series, in which case, great. I mean, I, I'm happy for you. I wouldn't because I feel like it like the premise, the background was kind of underdeveloped. Like there's some rebels, there's some casts. This is really more a question of like, how interesting do you think the series could be made? Shadowhunters is a show that added a bunch of stuff to make it better serialized. And also I believe Cassandra Clare hated the Shadowhunters show, but like, I don't care. The show was fine. Like the first season was kind of whatever. The second season was noticeably better and it kind of grew better and better until it stopped happening. They, they definitely did some really cool stuff with the characters. If I were to like actually adapt the books though, the City of Bones or the Clockwork Princess stuff, I would probably make it movies because Why? <laughs> Why are you like this, friend? Do other Listen, I know that like there are YouTubers who are like, oh look, my cat has wandered into the background. But like, did their cats just like jump into frame? Or was that not in frame? Was I reacting to something you did not see? I feel like that must have been in frame though. Anyway. Amity Ravenclaw elf is getting distracted. 
certainly hope that I've gained enough goodwill as a content creator that I can kind of ramble about books and you guys will be fine. Like, is this terrible for you guys? Let me know if this is terrible for you guys. Fortunately, I, as I've said, this is mostly just like a setup for some future videos where I could be like, hey, how would I adapt the Aragon books, which I love? Would I make them movies? No, because if I did, it'd be painfully obvious that they're like Star Wars wrapped in Lord of the Rings. Uh, would I make it a show? Yeah. Who would the main character be? Angela the Herbalist. I'm kidding, of course, but I would play Angela the Herbalist. That's, it's very important that I play Angela the Herbalist. There's no way around that, I'm sorry. Oh no, I better not start fan casting things or we'd be here all day. Okay, second thing. The first thing was like, how much time are we willing to spend in this universe and with these characters? Second thing is, is the book plot so unbelievably convoluted that you kind of have to make it episodes of a show in order to understand what's going on? I haven't read the Song of Ice and Fire books or seen Game of Thrones, but I assume that's the case with them. Oh, this character is using this name now, which means this, and this character has a whole backstory with this guy. I assume that it kind of had to be a TV show. I think format-wise, like, like Game of Thrones was pretty much what it needed to be format-wise. Do you need to break it up in order to understand it? The Harry Potter movies, which I'm sorry to bring up so much, left out a lot of stuff, but they just kind of threw it in anyway. Like, they'd be like, okay, we never showed Sirius giving Harry the mirror, but also Harry has a piece of mirror now. Don't ask any questions. <laughs> Would it have benefited from a show format there? Not really. I think it would have benefited from just leaving in the mirror. It wasn't that hard. Just be like, oh, hey, Harry, here's a mirror. Okay, serious, no problem. Seriously, though, don't support JK Rowling. She's being very harmful to UK politics around transgender people. It's not good. Number three. Between installments of the book series, I'm assuming it's a book series. If it's a single book, ignore this one. But if it's a book series, between installments, is it more episodic or immersive? What I'm asking is, <laughs> it, is it like, aha, we have to continue in the fight we've been we've already been having. This is another episode of the same arc. Or is it like, aha, a new villain, a new problem has arisen. Now you may be thinking, hey, that's not what the word episodic means. You're using episodic to mean that it's parts of a whole story and not the actual definition of episodic, which is like loosely connected events, much like the Odyssey or something like that. I understand why you would think that, but I'm changing the definition of episodic. Maybe I should just use a different word actually once I get holistic, no? Okay, basically, do the, do the different installments exist as parts of a whole story or does each installment expound on kind of the broader universe? Basically the contrast between Avatar The Last Airbender and Avatar Legend of Korra. Avatar The Last Airbender, while it did break it up as water, earth, fire so that it's kind of a different challenge each season or each book, there's still the overwhelming arc of we have to defeat Fire Lord Ozai. That is our objective. That is our long-term goal is to stop the Fire Nation and the war. That's our thing. Legend of Korra, we get different villains every book. First book, we have to deal with Amon and the Equalist. Second book, we have to deal with Unalak. Unalak, right? It's Unalak. We have to deal with the Water Tribe guy who's Korra's uncle and he's trying to bring back the spirits or something. I only watched that once. Book three, we deal with Zaheer and Zaheer's buddies who want to take over the Earth Kingdom in the name of anarchy or like dissolve. Actually, they want to dissolve all the governments now that I think about it. They want to dissolve all the governments because anarchy. Book four is like, oh man, Kuvira wants to take over the Earth Kingdom. Not in an anarchist fashion, fashion? <laughs> Not in an anarchist fashion, but in the sense of like, I want to be in charge of the Earth Kingdom and like an empire. That's a whole thing that Kuvira is doing. Avatar The Last Airbender, each installment operates as parts of a whole story because the creators were given like the information of you have three seasons. And in Legend of Korra, the books operate as expansive, like new aspects of the world each time because the creators were not told how many seasons they had. They were told you have one season and then they were told you have one more season. And then they were told you have two seasons or something like that. The creators were not given the information they needed to have, so they ended up with a story that was not very connected, but that's okay, because as I'm saying here, that's a valid way to tell a story is in disjointed seasons and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure Vampire Diaries did that according to Jenny Nicholson's video. I did not watch that show, but I like Bonkai. So which is which, you ask? Is the episodic one where they're all pieces of the same story the movie? Or is the different arcs every whatever the movie Gosh, if the story is told through like parts of a whole, then I think that that should be a movie series, much like Harry Potter. I 
promise I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a different example at some point. But yes, Harry Potter was told as parts of a whole we're defeating Voldemort the whole time, except for in the third book where we're defeating like Pettigrew. It made sense to do that as a movie series. It depends on how you want to tell the story, basically. But again, we're not adapting Harry Potter anymore. We gotta stop doing that. If they do go, hey, let's make a new Harry Potter series, we got, it's our obligation to not watch that. Like that's on us, guys. That's that's that belongs to us to say. No, because JK Rowling's getting money from that and we don't support her. If the story is told in a more immersive way where it's like, okay, different aspects of the lore are being revealed. First we were tackling the Equalists, now we're tackling the Northern Water Tribe or Southern Water, wh whichever, whoever that guy was. If it's doing all that, then I think it should be a TV series. I realize that my saying this seems like it's saying that the Percy Jackson books would be better as movies than as the TV series that's coming to Disney+. Plus. And I think structurally that's true, but also I think that structurally the Disney Plus series is probably going to be just like a movie chopped up. The series Unfortunate Events series on Netflix was pretty much just like each each book is its own movie. They chop it in half and then they put put it on Netflix as a show. So like it's probably going to be in movie format. It's just going to be wrapped up as a show. I hope this is coherent what I'm saying. Number 4 How's the angst? What kind of what kind of songs can we get out of it? I realize that I've been presenting this as like movie versus show this whole time, but like, could we make it a musical? Could we get some like cool musical songs out of this? Could we get like an arguing duet, or <laughs> or like a Les Mis style crowd fight song? <laughs> and this this isn't just talking about stage musicals. I like mu movie musicals, and also. Does the style of humor in the books lend itself well to like a gallivant style uh, musical show? Maybe a Phineas and Ferb style musical show? Except not animated unless it is. I mean, I'm not anti-animation. I love cartoons, but I just don't think that Percy Jackson should be one. I know it's not gonna be, but I've heard a lot of people who are like, oh man, they should make Percy Jackson animated. And I'm kind of like, no. I mean, I wouldn't prefer that. It's okay if you do, it's this is just my opinion, is that like, I like looking at people faces and like, I'm, if they made a Percy Jackson animated show and it was good and the art style was really pretty, I would love it. I just, in a conceptual sense, just thinking about it here, as me, Amity Ravenclaw Elf, I'm thinking, I would like it to be live action. And that's just me. So I'm alone on this hill but it's sunny up here. Let's let's get some examples of like different things and how I would adapt them speed fire just to generate interest in future videos potentially. Sisters Grimm series, if anyone has read that, I think that would be really cool as first of all a show because you know, detective, fairy tale detectives is very versatile. It could be used for many things. Second of all, I think it should be a Gallivant style musical show because I think we could work with that. Holes, a movie and, a, and the movie is perfect. So we don't have to adapt Holes again. If we do make it exactly like the existing movie, maybe a no, I was gonna say maybe a Pixar thing so that we could afford to have Stanley be fat and then grow thinner without like starving an actor. But uh, I don't know about no, DreamWorks. I mean, DreamWorks, Prince of Egypt is probably my favorite animated movie off the top of my head, but also I don't know about DreamWorks right now. I think DreamWorks is in a stage where it's not making good things <laughs> unless I've forgotten something that was recent. I guess like Rise of the Guardians was good, but that wasn't recent. I'm not here to like roast companies. I'm sorry. Person Jack, Person Jackson, <laughs> Person Jackson, <laughs> the Percy Jackson series. I mean, the musical was great. I would love it to be a series of musicals. Like the first musical, I want there to be another musical that covers the um, Sea of Monsters. That is what I want. Narnia. Oh my gosh, that would be a good show. I would definitely look at. Look, I would definitely watch an expansive thing on Narnia. With the, ooh, then we could really go into the fact that these people were like whole adults and then they came back as kids and that's like a whole problem. <laughs> I would love to watch a show that's like them dealing, first of all, them doing the first, or even if the show, maybe the show doesn't start on like with the Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe, it starts with them coming out of the wardrobe or about to come out of the wardrobe. It starts with them as kings and queens. And then when they come out of the wardrobe, we have to watch like one season of them dealing with that. Like, oh man. We're not, there's no talking animals here. We get occasional flashbacks of their time in Narnia. Actually, people would hate that. Never mind. I'm going too psychological with it. We're, <laughs> we're missing out on the talking beavers. And then season two is Prince Caspian. I, stop, stop me. Tell me to stop. You, it is your responsibility to tell me to stop because this is a bad idea. Don't let me pitch this to anyone. Gregor the Overlander. I have a whole thing that I'm, I, I have imagined a trailer for a Gregor the Overlander movie so many times. And what I am imagining is, <laughs> I'm imagining, you see, so, okay. 
you see someone falling, but it's just a figure. You don't know who it is. And then they land like with a, like a little thump noise. They land on the ground, like they fell down a huge hole and they, they land on the ground and you just see like a shot of a pair of boots and like some dust rising off as they, as they land on the ground. And then like they walk a little ways and then you see some glowing eyes in the darkness and like it's the, and you hear little cockroach noises like <coughs> little cockroach noises. And then the cockroach is like, they say, be she princess, be she, be she queen, be she. Because that is what they say in the book. I remember that. So they say that and then we, cut to a shot of the person they're talking to, and it's this like 10 or, well not 10, like a 12 to 15 year old girl. And she, and she says, hi, I'm Margaret Campbell. Everyone calls me Boots. I'm looking for my brother or something like that. And it's like, whoa, what happened? Boots has grown now, where is Gregor? <laughs> Gregor went back to the Underland and the whole of the actual series is told through flashbacks to when Gregor was like a kid and Boots was a baby. I want that so much. Like, I feel like the, anyone who read the books and knows who Boots is and who Gregor is will just be like, oh, everyone's an adult now. What's, or not an adult, but everyone's older now. What's going on? I should probably make a video about that too, but I definitely need to make a video about like how I would alter Twilight because I feel like there's a lot of potential there if they just like, if she had just managed to not be racist, <laughs> like a little bit, if she had just been like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't take an actual Native American tribe of human people and made up some mythology for them and painted them all as abusers and like, <clears throat> there was potential there. First step, don't call them by the tribe's name. Second step, donate to the Quileute Reservation because they deserve donations. Boy, this feels like it was probably a, uh, a meandering video, but I hope that I've generated some hype around some videos that I might make in the future. Let me know what you would like to hear about adaptations for. I, I didn't even touch on musicals, but I think that should be like a video into itself, like how to adapt movie musicals. What should you take into consideration for those? Seriously, the Shadowhunter show did some really cool things with Sebastian. Like I, I genuinely really like the direction they took Sebastian in, on, in the Shadowhunter show. Also, Alec, they kind of made Alec a much, I don't wanna say better character, but I like show Alex, Alec, I like show Alec a lot more than I liked book Alec. And I liked book Alec well enough, but I, I show Alec really kind of like, okay. And like Cassandra Clare, you don't have to get mad about that. They were inspired by your work. They looked at your work and they were like, hey, let's really like grow some flowers here. Maybe Alec doesn't have to be biphobic at all. Maybe he could just be cool with it. Maybe we don't have to make the Sebastian flaw fully around like his, him having demon blood, which kind of goes against the theming. Don't discriminate against people who have demon blood. And then Sebastian's like, I am evil because demon blood. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm all for series with like different kinds of different species of characters like dwarves, elves, fairies, whatever. I love it when they actually explore like, hey, what's the culture of the race? We don't have to be like, oh, they are greedy. So we have to like, so we have to trick them. No, we don't do that. We understand their culture. We understand how to interact with them on the basis of their culture. But that's a whole nother video. I gotta stop. Have a great day. <laughs> Um, sing songs, eat vegetables, drink water, walk responsibly, um, wear sunscreen if it's hot. You don't want to get sick. That's not something that you want. I actually, I made another video earlier, like a, a month ago or more than that. I made another video that was like, hey, ranking Disney Channel original movies. But I ended up not posting it because as I was editing it, I was like, is this entertaining? Maybe it's not entertaining. And then I just kind of didn't post it. Maybe I'll post it now that I've brought it up. So I, I hope this doesn't end up just kind of sitting in iMovie like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> No one let me make a video about WandaVision. I've actually I've actually considered making a video like uh, comparing the character of Wanda to the character of Audrey and why I find Audrey a more more palatable writing wise than Wanda, but that's a whole nother thing and I don't even think Descendants 3 was written well, hence that video I made. <laughs> Whereas WandaVision was like doing pretty well until maybe episode I don't know the episode numbers, but probably episode six. I'm sorry, I have to stop. I don't want to make people who like WandaVision mad at me. Have a great day, love you guys, beautiful humans. Did I ever say greetings, salutations, beautiful humans? This is a mess.